You are listening to the Fringe Radio Network. FringeRadioNetwork.com Listening to Earth Oddity, a weekly odyssey into all the oddity planet Earth has to offer. And now, serving it up are Christopher Tiny Sullivan and John Long. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Earth Oddity Podcast, and we thank you so much for joining us. Whether you are a man protesting a breakfast with Santa event in Texas, or whether you are mourning the end to a three-year marriage to a 400-year-old pirate that's dead, by the way. Oh, yeah. We're so sorry. That's a follow-up story, too, by the way. <laughs> but thank you for joining us. Yes, yeah. We appreciate everybody tuning in. I don't know. Tuning in is probably not the right uh, you know, uh, phrase to use because right. people don't tune in to us. They download us and listen. But we just thank you for listening. All yes. right. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Um, we've had a good week. We had a guest spot on another podcast. We did, and we'll be talking more about that in community news. That's right. Yeah. So keep it. Uh, you know, keep listening for <laughs> yes. that. You know, forget <laughs> that you have a fast forward button and listen to the rest of it. Because I think it's broken now. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Apple. Apple said, took that feature right, out. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So don't even look for it because yeah. it's not there. Yeah. Right. Of course. And Tiny and I would never <laughs> not tell you the truth. Um, oh man you got any good stories i got several i got several i got one we're gonna save towards the end <laughs> yes i have to let let our younger audience uh, right around story seven or eight yeah just keep that in the back yeah, of your mind gonna, parents yeah. just just don't listen to that when you're taking the kids to school or in the pickup line you know as they get in the car we'll we'll, we'll let you know yeah um the first one though because we kind of gotta get on our horses here i'll run through um is from the washington post um And it is about eels uh, getting stuck up the nostrils of uh, Hawaiian monk seals. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's no no good. No. And it's got a picture here that's pretty precious of a seal who looks like he's just hanging out on the beach and he's got an eel hanging out of his nose. Um, It says a relaxed looking juvenile Hawaiian monk seal lounges near a sandy white beach on some green foliage. Its eyes are half closed and it has a serene expression on its face. But the seal's calm demeanor is surprising. Why? Well, there's a long black and white eel dangling from its right nostril. Oh, man. (laughs) Yeah. It's just so shocking, Claire Simone A veterinarian and monk seal expert based in Hawaii told the Washington Post on Thursday, um, it's an animal animal that has another animal stuck up its nose. Uh, Which, by the way, I think if you could, like, have monk seal expert, you know, like, after your name, (laughs) that's pretty cool, or, like, on your business card. Um, Someone wasn't the only, or Simone wasn't the only person stunned by the photo of the seal and its unusual facial ornament. Um... It, the uh, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's Hawaiian Monk Seal Research Program um, took a picture and posted it to their Facebook. And so everyone started, of course, once it gets on right. Facebook, everybody's, they're probably arguing about Donald Trump in the comments, too. <laughs> um, it all began about two years ago when Littonen, who was a scientist with the uh, with that national whatever I just read, mm-hmm. um uh, he's the lead scientist of the Monk Seal program, woke up to a strange email from researchers in the field, and the subject line was short, ill in nose. <laughs> it, <laughs> it was just like, we found a seal with a needle stuck in his nose. Do we have a protocol? Uh, but, of course, there wasn't any. Uh, there were only maybe two inches of the eel actually sticking out of the nose, so it was very much akin to the magician's trick when they're pulling out the handkerchiefs and they keep coming and coming and coming. Um, so did the did the seal do this on purpose? Well, I said, uh, how did see, he get an eel in his I nose? I say uh, we have no idea. This is what Littman says. We have no idea why this is suddenly happening. Um, they've been at least four reported cases, and the most recent occur- occurred this fall. Um, you see some very strange things if you watch nature long enough, and this could end up being one of those little oddities 
Nice shout out to our <laughs> podcast. We yes. appreciate that, sir. Uh, I'm glad you're listening. And mysteries of our career that 40 years from now will we re- be retired and still questioning quite how this happened. Um, this is a uh, the researchers have already determined that it's not uh, the result of a human with a personal vendetta against seals or eels. Um, because all the cases were reported from remote island, islands that are frequented only by scientists. So this is happening more than once. This isn't one rogue monk seal. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's happening more than once. Huh. Um, a seal's preferred prey is usually fish, octopuses, and, of course, eels that like to hide in the coral reefs uh, to avoid being eaten. Um, and since the marine mammal doesn't have hands, just in case you don't know about <laughs> seals out there, they have to hunt with their faces. So they like to stick their faces into the coral reef holes and they'll spit water out of their mouths to flush things out. Smart. Yeah. And they'll do all sorts of tricks, but they are shoving their faces into the holes. Um, and so maybe as a result of that, the, the scare in the eel is just like directly up their nostril. You know, like it tries to run out. <laughs> like the cartoon of the frog strangling the crane. Yes, exactly. With the caption, never yes, give up. Never give up. Yes. Uh, <laughs> It says, I struggle to think of an eel really wanting to force its way into a nose. Um, the other way eels may end up in nostrils is through throwing up, similar to how people sometimes in, end up accidentally spewing vomit out of their nose. <laughs> Milk yeah. out of their nose at lunchtime? Right, yeah. I mean, we've all had that happen, right? I <laughs> yeah. mean, that's the worst, by the way. <laughs> so maybe he's already eaten the eel. He gets a little sick to his stomach. Uh-oh. He goes to puke and it comes out some the eel comes out his nose mr so. eel you should chew your food better yeah if that's absolutely the case. yeah you're just swallowing it whole man that ain't cool uh but you know like it says uh uh the most plausible theory he said is that monk seal teenagers aren't all that different from their human counterparts monk seals seem naturally attracted to getting into troublesome troublesome situations It almost does feel like one of those teenage trends that happen. One juvenile seal did this very stupid thing, and now the other ones are trying to mimic it. (laughs) So it's basically Tide Pod with eels. Yes. And I will say when I... (laughs) All the the teenager seals are like, man, have you done the eel challenge? (laughs) Right, yes. Uh, When I I was a teenager, we briefly for a few... We had an older friend who went into the Marine Corps when he came back. Yeah. He, uh, after the first Iraq war, he taught us a trick where he would take his dog tag chain and run it through his mm-hmm. nose and back out of his mouth. So like on Ripley's. Yeah, yeah, yeah I guess yeah. so. And so we all kind of learned to do that. Dude, oh! that's disgusting! Which, man, <laughs> I, I was never good at it. I had some other friends that were better at it. But yeah, so maybe it's one of those things too. I don't know. But yeah, I mean, that would make my eyes water and burn real bad. But other ones were, were very good at it, so... But yeah, uh, did, did it ever make you sneeze? Yeah, sometimes, yeah, <laughs> oh, that, tickle, tickle that your seems nose. Seems like that would be murder yeah. almost. Yeah, it's not fun. God, but yeah, it's all connected up in there somehow. Yeah, yeah that was uh, that was it. But yeah, so my theory is that they're getting sick to their stomachs and throwing up. I, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not a monk seal expert, <laughs> yeah. although I wish I was. But, uh, <laughs> but that's what I think it is. It seems the most plausible to me. You know, monk seals, they are the uh, the most solemn and contemplative <laughs> species of seal. That's right. You'd think they would have, uh, you think they'd know better. That's right. Yeah, you would. But you, <laughs> yeah, you can't keep a monk seal down. They're going to, they're, <laughs> yeah. they're, you know, fun loving, happy, ill eating things. But yeah, either the, the eel is getting scared of running up the nose or they're vomiting out. It's got to be what's happening. Or it's an Instagram trend. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And it may just happen all the time and we're just now kind of seeing it. It's been happening yeah. forever because, you know, we're having been watching them as closely as we have. Or maybe, you know, like his buddy comes along and is like, hey, there's a tasty eel hanging out your nose and he goes to eat it, pull out, and nobody ever sees it. You know, mm-hmm. maybe it happens all the time. I don't know. <laughs> maybe. Eel's got to be the right size, though. Yeah. You know? Right. Can't be a big one. So. Yeah. Or or you need to be a big seal. Yeah, very true. It's a big <laughs> nostril. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's right. All right, let's move on to uh, elf murder. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Merry Christmas, kids. <laughs> you filthy animal. <laughs> Our headline for our next story, Elf Murder Exercise Leaves Student Traumatized, Mom Claims. Oh, wow. There was a crime scene in the classroom. Mm. And this comes from Fox News. 
A woman claims her daughter was left traumatized after her elementary school staged an elf murder activity. Okay. Eight and nine-year-old students at Flowery Field Primary School in England arrived in class to discover a crime scene featuring police tape, drops of blood, which were all set up as part of, part of this writing exercise. Okay. <laughs> there was a crime scene in one of the classrooms, and the idea was that an elf had been murdered by another elf. My daughter came home, and she was absolutely traumatized, one mom told the Manchester Evening News. Oh. She claims other parents and their kids were also unsettled by the nature of the exercise. I am very open with my children, and I understand you can't protect them from everything, but my child was very upset last night and had to sleep in my bed, she said. Oh. Which... <laughs> the kid could be just using this as an That's excuse. What I'm yeah. <laughs> My mind immediately went to leave. Yeah. Who will want to sleep with us because her head itches or something? Her head itches. Yeah. The idea of the unusual activity was to have students play detective, looking for clues to identify the suspect and then later playing journalist to write the story. Okay. Um, CSI North Pole. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> And, of course, there's a, a Twitter caption here that came from the, the newspaper. It says, uh, Elf Update, Year 4 have been hard at work coming up with puny newspaper headlines, detectives yesterday, and journalists today. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's probably was a good idea in theory, you know. But, yeah. Yeah, kids can overreact to stuff. I mean, it says Year 4. I think fourth graders. So is that fourth graders or is that third graders? I don't know how the English know. school system yeah. works. I don't either. I don't either. We need uh we need Sadie to yeah. write in and tell yeah, us. Sadie, let us know what's going on. <laughs> yeah. Because I gotta be honest, like if I was in fourth grade and I came in and there's a crime scene and blood everywhere, yeah. I would be so into this. Right. Which I was kind of a disturbed kid, maybe. <laughs> so maybe that's just me. Well, you know, a deer got into the fit elementary school one time oh yeah was, and it was like running around and then it like it was early in the morning like when the buses were dropping off and then it like busted out the window to jump out <laughs> and there was like blood everywhere oh man it was really awesome totally cool <laughs> you know like i thought it was great but i wasn't in there while it was running around deidre was though i got there like right after it happened man and it like busted out the window and we like get out of the bus and everybody you know saw all the buzz and so we run over wow. and look at all the blood i'm like oh cool you know and I regretted that I didn't get to see it. I, yeah, I would. Yeah. I would have regretted that as well. But yeah, so I don't think it would have freaked me out. But you know, like I say, I don't know how old these kids are. I feel like if it was Libby, you know, mm -hmm. you know, she's probably been toughened up enough that it wouldn't bother her. Right. Like if she showed up at school tomorrow and there's an elf murder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, who knows? It says uh, all of the ninety children who took part, none of them showed anything but full engagement. One of the children said to me, "I am definitely being a detective when I grow up." Awesome. Uh, I have been a teacher for 30 years, and this is, in my judgment, an appropriate, engaging, and exciting thing that children aged 8 and 9 have done. Okay, okay so, so they're about, Libby's age. Yeah, yeah. about Libby and, and Eli's yeah, age. Yeah, right. Yeah. They have been so up for it. I am really looking forward to see the quality of the outcomes. We are not trying to keep this a secret, and we will be tweeting about the rest of the exercise today. Okay. So no apologies. No apologies. No, Basically, right. hey, this was a fun activity. Yeah. Sorry, your kids are wimp. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I tell you what, some of these pictures they got like a chalk outline, oh, but wow. the pointy ears are on the head, <laughs> and they've got drops of blood and Is crime it red scene blood? tape. Yes. Okay. I was thinking like I would do a different green color. blood. Yeah, like green blood or something like, like slime. That. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Predator yeah. slime. I think that would make it a little more fun. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I don't know. It may be a little bit less gruesome, too. Right. You yeah. Know? Less uh, believable for the kid. Yeah. Or, you know, so they know. Like we like didn't a really line. murder an right. elf. <laughs> yeah. Right. There's a line to separate reality or whatever. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, man, I, to me, if I was probably eight or nine, I would have thought that was a really cool project, too. Yeah. You know, I get to like discover stuff and figure stuff out. Yeah. I mean, I like to play detective today. Yeah. You know, when I'm watching Investigation Discovery, True. I'm like, ooh. Oh, yeah. It was the boyfriend. It's always the boyfriend. Oh, yeah. Always. Always. <laughs> Which there was another story I was going to do about a, a guy who ended up killing his wife and kids. It was a little too dark for me to make <laughs> yeah. jokes about. A little bit too dark for her thought it But his mistress had some really interesting Google searches. <laughs> I say that. If people, y'all can look it up if you want to. I can't remember the guy's name, but it was here recently. Yeah. And yeah, his mistress was, 
Yeah, she's big on the Google. She tried to act like she didn't know, but there's a lot of really, yeah. <laughs> yeah, people, I don't want to help anybody get away with crimes. Absolutely but not. But Google's watching everything yeah, you do, right. everything. Yes. and I think Everything. I, I think I've mentioned before, like, the day that Google releases everything we've all searched about. <laughs> it's going to be an awkward yeah, day. We're all just going to have to just be like, let's just pretend this didn't happen, guys. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, Okay, all right, you're into some weird stuff. I'm into some weird stuff. Let's just pretend this didn't happen. Because I will search Google stuff. Like, yeah. you know, it'll come up on my mind. Like, you know, how fast does a body decompose? And I'll, like, Google that just to see. Yeah. And then, like, one day, if I get accused of murder, that's going to come back and haunt me, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, just be careful what you're Googling. You know, I would also like to say there is a lot of fun stuff for sale on Amazon. Oh, yeah. But I'm afraid to search stuff because I don't want that popping up in my recommended right. list. You see yes. what I'm saying? Well, we may or may not share an Amazon Prime account <laughs> with someone. Uh-oh. <laughs> and, uh, and so, yeah, we have to be real careful. I made a suggestion <laughs> once. Like, hey, why don't we, we can just look online and, you know, and uh, they're like, no, no, I don't, I don't want it. You know what? People see it our searches for that. <laughs> I'm going to take this upon myself to fix everybody's problem. Mm-hmm. Amazon needs an incognito mode. That's right. <laughs> That'll fix it. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Amazon, if you're out there, Alexa, we need an incognito <laughs> mode so we can search various items, items. novelties. Yeah. yeah, right, yeah. For, it was like for a gag gift for a party. Yes. Right, yeah. <laughs> Some yeah. people just... Like the taste of underwear. That's right. Yeah, yeah. We all—they're fruit roll-ups. If you didn't know, by the way, basically fruit roll-ups don't taste as good as a fruit roll-up. Um, oh man! All right, so let's move back on to a little more religious story here. <laughs> this is about our friends in the Catholic Church. Big fans of the Catholic Church do a lot of great stuff all they around do. the world. Great at fundraising. We have some very serious disagreements. We do. But that is normal in a family. True. To not agree on everything. Right. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. They are ultimately brothers and sisters. Yeah. Well, we agree on a lot. Though. Yes. We yes. agree on the important things. Yes. And they definitely do a lot of great work worldwide to yes. help impoverished people. Um, and, and like I say, they're great at fundraising. Um, so here we have some nuns. Uh, nuns steal $500,000 from Catholic school and go gambling. <laughs> this is from Torrance, California. Two nuns at a Catholic school in California are accused of stealing $500,000 in school funds and using 500000 oh, yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. And using the money on vacations and gambling. All right, I'm surprised nuns get vacation time. <laughs> Where do they go on vacation to? <laughs> Maybe we'll get down here into it. Let's see. <laughs> Bank records show Sister Mary Margaret Krupper and Sister Lana Lang. Lana's not a very <laughs> nun name, by the Lana way. Lang. Yeah. Wasn't she on Smallville? <laughs> Maybe so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Lana's it's not like a biblical name, I don't think. She I would have had my eye on her from the beginning. <laughs> Of the St. James Catholic School in Torrance have been embezzling from the school for at least 10 years. Oh, no. Um, Krupper, who retired as the school's principal earlier this year, handled all tuition checks and fees. She allegedly withheld some checks and deposited them into an account. Only she and uh, Chang, it says Chang now instead of Lang, knew about. (laughs) So either there's a typo on one. I I guess because it refers to Chang later on. Please be Lang, though. Yeah, yeah, would, that would be great. Um, while investigators uh, found the two gave some of the stolen money back to the school, the rest was used for their personal gain. Uh, as Krupper and Chang used the embezzled money for trips and casino gambling, they told parents of the students the school was operating on a tight budget. Smart move <laughs> on their part, by the way. Um, the report claims the archdiocese and the church are not pursuing criminal charges after the nuns express remorse. So... That's good to know. You know? I guess uh, if you're if you're thinking about embezzling <laughs> yeah. money from the church, yeah, just go ahead and say, "I'm, hey guys, sorry that <laughs> I'm, the Holy Spirit has convicted yes. me and that was wrong." And so let's just not take this to the authorities. So, because I tell you what, over here, you know, with the Protestants, oh, yeah, we are not that no. easy going. <laughs> no, you'd have been in some trouble. You we would be some, like, "We forgive you now, yeah, pay us back." That's right. Yeah, <laughs> we forgive you. We got two choices here. You pay us back everything you took, or you go to jail and pay your time. You know, do serve your time. 
Yeah, because if you take from the building fund, <laughs> it's all <laughs> over with. But good news. I mean, you're still invited to the Christmas party. That's right. Yeah, we love you. We're going to pray for you. Bring your kids to VBS. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And make that check payable to right. <laughs> Carol's, Carol's Creek, Creek Ministries. Ministries. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's exactly how it works. You come on to the fall festival, you know, you do all the normal things. You know, we're, we're not going to excommunicate you from yes. church or anything. We forgive you. We, we totally forgive now you. Now pay up. Yeah, but, but we're going to need that money back. <laughs> we have plans for it, okay? The Lord has plans That's right. for it. That's right. We're trying and to, your vacation is not one of them. <laughs> trying to get up a new children's wing here at the church, so come on. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, uh, so that's a very short story, but I, I think it's kind of crazy. That is know. crazy. I, I would think there would be a little more oversight on, you know, the at the Catholic school, you know. Mm-hmm. I know the, the Catholic Church has some problems here recently with a lot of different things. They have. And I feel I, like I oversight, <laughs> I feel like they're a little more trusting, you know. Like yeah. here at our church, we won't even let our secretary, who we everybody at this church loves and trusts, one of the most dearest ladies in the world, she doesn't even count the deposit money by herself. Someone has to be in the room with her mm-hmm. to make sure everything's on the up and up. And it's not that anyone thinks that she would take the money. That is not the case at all. It's just that there's... And so people don't accuse her. Exactly. Such there's thing. no appearance of that right. happening right so you know i feel like hey we should probably to our catholic brothers and sisters let's buddy go, system yeah let's get the buddy system going yeah exactly <laughs> that's a good start yeah that'd be a good thing to do here because uh you don't want you your nun sister lana taking all the money down to the casino for you know, betting ponies at the track or whatever they're doing nuns on vacation yeah. I want to go on vacation with nuns. What, I want to see what they do. Right. Well, you know, uh, I've, I've seen a few like at baseball games, like at Major League Baseball games uh-huh. or whatever, and it's always weird. And maybe it's because we're in the South and the Catholic presence isn't as huge here outside of Louisiana. Right. Of course, it's huge mm-hmm. in Louisiana. But in Alabama, you know, we had a Catholic church. I was about to say, we have, we have a Catholic church, but, yeah, it's, yeah. you know, again, it's not... It, well, just what you said. You just it's, don't see. You don't see. It you a don't lot. see a nun at the you know around town in her habit and all mm-hmm. that, or even just like the little hat they wear. I don't know the proper terms. Mm-hmm. You know the hat that they wear with the little you know just dress modestly. You don't see that that often. Yeah, if you see a dude in Dollar yeah. General with the little collar, right? Like you're getting yeah. out your phone and snapping a picture. <laughs> yes. You know. Now we'll say on Halloween you'll see a lot of college girls dress as nuns. <laughs> definitely not, non-traditional. Not <laughs> the same thing. Yeah, non-traditional, but they're definitely floating around town. If, that was one of the things when I had the the restaurant, you know, down there by all the bars. Halloween night, you know, I'm like <laughs> doing my deposits and doing my paperwork. And you just see like a parade of girls going by. And you're just like, wow. Like, Every outfit skimpier yeah, than the last. Right. <laughs> you're just like, wow. Like I brought a daughter into this world, you know, and now I have to <laughs> contend with this. And I have boys, too, who have to contend with that as well. Who like, for some <laughs> reason want to work. Yeah, here on yeah. Halloween. All night. of a sudden, they're really interested in coming to work with Dad. I don't get it. You know? Yeah, it's crazy. Our next story involves a school as well, and it is a school turns over student lunch debts over to a collection agency. Okay. So. All right. I'll tell you. I just want to get it off my chest. We, the Long family, the Tuscaloosa County Board of Education, knows us well because we are the <laughs> worst at depositing money. <laughs> into our che- our kids' uh, uh, lunch fund or whatever. And yeah. we refuse to do I don't know that we refuse, but we just don't do it until the school actually puts a sticker on them that says, hey, pay money so I can eat. <laughs> and then we'll like put money in there. And we don't think of it. Well, be glad you don't live in Rhode Island, sir. Okay, yeah. Because Rhode Island's Cranston School District hired a collection agency to recover unpaid student lunch balances. Wow. In a letter to parents... Raymond Voto Jr., Chief Operating Officer of Cranston Public Schools, said the district had previously tried to collect outstanding lunch bills without much success. In an effort to reduce our unpaid balance, the district has retained the service of a collection agency. Hmm. The company is Transworld Systems, and they will (laughs) will begin their collection efforts effective January 2nd, 2019, the letter said. Wow. So you can be expecting a visit from yeah. Vito. Oh, man, how about if you go to get like a car loan and you get turned down because you owe the school for school lunches? You know, like it's like dinging your credit every month. That's yeah. horrible. 
Voto said that between September 1st, 2016 and June 30th, 2018, the school district wrote off $95,508. Wow. wow. And he said that the unpaid balance for the current academic year is $45,859. Okay. We got that debt down a little bit, though. That's good. <laughs> well, That's good. Year's not over yet. That's true, but I, I doubt you're going to pick up fifty grand in one one month. So. Well, they've... Picked up fifty grand the first half, yeah, or true. nearly. Yeah, so that's true. Yeah, they're, I yeah, guess right. maybe they're on pace. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. I have my time frame off, but yeah, it says that the district lunch program cannot continue to lose revenue. Mm-hmm. Uh, lunch at public elementary school in Cranston costs two fifty a day. For middle school and high school students, it's three twenty five a day. He said that parents who owe twenty dollars or more who haven't paid off the balance within sixty days will receive a letter from the collection collection agency starting next year. Oh wow! So everyone out there in the Cranston school district, it's time to pay up. You might say everyone because this is going to spread. You know, like once <laughs> other school districts catch wind of this, like hey, this like, actually works. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, then they're going to start doing it, too. They send two guys in suits, two right. big dudes in suits with yep. a baseball bat to to, that, to your house. To collect <laughs> well, you know, like uh, how it works here, at least how it works, as I as it explained to me at our school, which our mm-hmm. school is wonderful, and we love everybody at our school, uh, our elementary school. Shout out to FVES, mm-hmm. uh, the Vikings. I know we're huge. Their biggest podcast there. You know, like if your kid runs out on money in his lunch account, they're going to feed the kid. You mm-hmm. know, regardless, they're not going to let the kids go hungry. But because like, it's not the kid's fault that right. his parents are dead. Exactly <laughs> right. And so, uh, from our experience, so I say we're not the best at remembering to put it in there. <laughs> and so, like they'll go like a day, maybe like one lunch, maybe two lunches, where the the lady's like, "Hey, we're going to float it," but it goes into your account as a debit. Right. So you know we owe that, and then they stick the sticker on their shirt and mm-hmm. come home, and we're like. Oh, okay. Well, now we got to put in fifty bucks so I can make it the rest of the month. Or that whatever. sticker is a good idea. Yes, do, do other kids like point to the sticker? It's and like start a scarlet making letter. Fun yeah. and shaming like your the parents kid. are poor. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good idea. Yeah, I know, I know. And that's I don't think they like do it to to call attention to the kids. And I know we're not the or only, at least they say they don't. Yeah, we're not the only family <laughs> who struggles in this area because we've discussed it with other people. Yeah, it's just like. Out of all the things we do, we don't ever think to refill the lunch account until they tell us. Mm-hmm. And, but, yeah, if they were like, we're sending this to collections, I feel that's not for people like us. It's mm-hmm. for people who just never pay. Right. You know, if you owe 20 bucks, that's about two weeks worth of food that you hadn't paid for. So I was about to say some quick math. This is an elementary school, so 250 a day. Yeah. And what was the total? It was, oh, I done closed out the window. It was, 90 was 95000 yeah. What's 95 grand? Oh, divided that's, by that's more math than I so can many do. days divided by two fifty. Yeah, I wonder how many days are in a school year, like hundred and eighty something. Yeah, I don't know. I think so. I'm trying to figure out how many kids this is. Let's see. Of course, it's not going to be quite accurate. So it's five hundred twenty-seven dollars a day divided by two fifty. It's about two hundred eleven kids a day who aren't paying across the school system, right. which is it I, to me. Yeah, it doesn't. At least, I don't know how big that place is. You know, like Tuscaloosa, mm-hmm. there in the county, there's probably seven, eight elementary schools. So, right. You know, you get 10 kids at a school doing it. But my thing is, if you're letting it get delinquent, you know, mm-hmm. like you can qualify for free lunches, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> the first, when we enrolled Thomas in school, they told us, if everybody, we want everyone to fill out the free lunch form. Even if you make a million dollars a year, fill this out. And I think that was partly because they don't want people to feel, you know, like, hey, I'm filling this out and everybody's looking at me like I'm broke and stuff. Right. So we fill ours out, you know, put our income, all that, hand it in the office. Next thing you know, we get a letter in the mail. It's like, your son's getting free lunch. <laughs> and you're like, yes. But Dieter and I were like, are we poor? You know, like, <laughs> like I didn't know we were poor, but are we poor? You know, like, I, I know that people make more money than us, but we have a house and we pay mm-hmm. our bills and everything. But I was like, okay, you know, whatever, we'll roll with it. And uh, and then like a week later, after school started, we got another letter and it was like, your income was keyed in wrong and you now <laughs> no longer get free lunch. Dad, got yeah. it. But they didn't make us repay the other one, so I was like, oh, okay, cool. But so for like a week, I was like, hey, we get to live on this free lunch life, you know? <laughs> I remember when I was a kid in school, like all the kids with free lunch got made fun of, and I got free lunch. Yeah, right. 
But I had to sit at the free lunch table. Oh, they had a free lunch table? Yeah. Wow. You may as well have had Quasimodo sitting at your table. Yeah. No! Oh, right. You know. That is horrible. I know. See, now everybody's... I sat at that table. Everybody's got their own number. And it doesn't matter if you're on free lunch or paying for lunch. You just go up and say, hey, my number is, you know, 39672. And they punch it in and you go. Right. Now, when I was in school, we went through line and you paid for your lunch and then um the people that were on free lunch had to give a number you know like i'm q72 or whatever mm-hmm. and so then you knew like oh well that guy's on free lunch which to me wasn't that big a deal i never looked down on anybody because they had to get free lunch you right. know i was like well okay that's cool you know whatever but i didn't make them sit all at one table that's horrible <laughs> wow wow open eye Feel the waves cut through me Hypnotized By the sounds I'm breathing in Hold tight, hold tight Chemicals collide Hold tight, hold tight Hold tight Dripping lights Paint the skies All because of you Dripping lights Kids out there, um, not everybody believes in Santa. Yeah, true. and there is not only one Grinch. No, <laughs> there yeah, are right. a lot Grinches, of Grinches. So yeah, multiple, multiple. Just know that uh, this happened in Dallas. Police say a 31-year-old protester who told children Santa Claus is not real has been arrested for trespassing at a North Texas church. Aaron Urbanski was arrested Saturday after authorities were called to a church in Claiborne which was hosting a Breakfast with Santa event. Police say they found three people demonstrating outside the church after responding to a trespassing complaint. (laughs) Authorities say that Urbanski refused to leave, and he continued to cause a disturbance. So this guy's really, he's really feeling his conviction Uh, about Santa not being real if if he won't leave, and he's been asked to. He was charged with criminal trespass and has been booked into the Johnson County Law Enforcement Center. Mayor Scott Kane weighed in on Facebook saying, Don't mess with Santa. The mayor continued, I guess they wanted Cole and their stonkings to go with a court appearance. Okay. I mean, dude has a right to protest whatever dumb thing he wants to, but you don't have a right to... You know, to trespass. Right. While yeah, you doing can't just so. roll up in somewhere. He needs to be on the. He needs to be out there on the sidewalk, making a complete buffoon of himself. <laughs> to me, like, <laughs> like how? Just imagine being like, just that type of person. That's like, I'm gonna go ruin this for everybody. Yeah. You know, 
Like that's just I don't I don't I can't get in that mind frame, you know. I don't even care if you're like, you know, the Holy Spirit led me to tell these kids whatever. <laughs> like, look, I don't think the Holy Spirit's telling you that, you know. <laughs> like I don't, I'm not trying to be like uh, you know, I, I can't discern the ways of the Lord or whatever. I I'm not trying to get into whole that, but I'm just saying I don't think ruining a bunch of small children's Christmas is <laughs> Really in the best interest of anyone. <laughs> yeah. Well, I feel like there's so much more that could be done before we jump on the hate Santa right. bandwagon. Yeah, like, exactly. Okay, maybe maybe Santa needs to be purged from childhood memories. <laughs> yeah. I'm not the judge. Right. But the day we take that up, I feel like hunger should be solved. Right. Cancer yeah. should be cured. Yeah. Right. You know? A lot of other things. It's way down on the list. Yeah. yeah. Let's get to that tribe <laughs> over in India that killed that missionary. You know? Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a big deal. That's a hard Turtle, we can't get over, you know. That is a that's a tough one. You know? Yeah, it's a, I don't. I'm just saying, like, like, golly, man. You know why people don't want to come to church? It's like guys like that. Yes. You know, this is it, man. I just, I just I if he's know. gonna do that, the least he could do is go to the store and put on a Grinch costume, right? Yes. And stand out there and <laughs> protest in your Grinch attire, yeah, right? You know, yes. because I would love it then, right? I would like see kids. It's the, the, Grinch. the Grinch. He's trying to he's trying to get you to not believe in Santa Claus. That's right. That's what the Grinch does. <laughs> I just don't understand. I I don't know. People like that are miserable. I'm sure on the inside they're miserable. Yeah. You know what's impressive is he got two people to go out there with him. Yeah. What if I called you up <laughs> one morning? I was like, hey, Tiny. You know what? I'm headed down to the mall, <laughs> and we're going to tell all the kids waiting in line to see Santa that. It's not real. And yeah. we're just going to ruin as many Christmas yeah. mornings as I we can. I want to see kids crying. <laughs> I want their parents to be appalled, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. So, <laughs> are you, Can I count you in, buddy? You know? <laughs> like, like, how do you even have that conversation with somebody? I'd be like, okay, okay, but first, can we stop off by the, I don't know, the abortion clinic or something, <laughs> <Right>. you know? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, you know, uh. There's the abortion clinic here in town. You yeah. know where it is? Yeah, yeah. A guy well, it's, it's kind of hard not to know where it right, is there's because always... every single weekend there's people standing outside with signs, you know. I have a friend who uh, is not a believer, and he worked for me for a long time, mm -hmm. and now he works on air conditioning. And he had a call, service call from the company he works for, for that place, and he just went. He didn't even know what it was, you know. <laughs> He just shows up to fix the air condition, and he's getting hollered at by oh, Christians no. and stuff. They're, like, taking pictures of his van and putting it on social media and, like, oh, don't patronize man. this thing, you know. And he sent me a message. This has been, I mean, probably a year or two years ago. He mm -hmm. sent me a message and was like, you know, this is why I don't go to church, oh, you know. No. And I was like, yep. well, you know, I mean, their it, their intentions are, are good. There's but, a right and a wrong way to protest. Yeah, right. I don't think. I don't think the guy coming to fix the air conditioner is the guy you need to be protesting. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, you know? I agree. Yeah, like he's just well, there even, working. Well, even the people who are going in there to yeah. let's say let's say a, a young woman has a horrible, horrible decision. Oh yeah, that absolutely. she has to make. Right, you're not gonna win her over to your side of thinking if you're calling her names and <laughs> yeah. telling her she's a murderer. Right, you see what I'm saying? No, I get it. I get it. I, I get mean, it. that's some people don't. This yeah. woman is, I mean, and okay, for everyone out there who's, who hasn't figured out, I'm pro-life. Yeah, me too. Now I'm pro-pro-life, super-life, yes. super-pro-life. Wish we did more for kids, too. Yeah. That's one of the things I will say, because a lot of our evangelical friends tend to fall on the right side mm -hmm. of the political spectrum. Is they're always like we need to with we need to get rid of these entitlements and all this stuff that we're doing. Well, a lot of that's well, going to help both ways. Yeah, a lot yeah. of that's going to help kids, and we might need to keep it around. You yeah, know? I'm not trying to get on a political soapbox or anything, but if we're going to be pro life, we can't just be pro birth. You know, right. we got to promote life through adulthood. You know, mm -hmm. until a kid gets self sufficient on his own. So, Agreed. Yeah. Anyway, I just want to get that off. The no, table no, no. You're absolutely where somebody right. tweets is about like y'all just <laughs> pro birth. You know, no, I wholeheartedly agree. Yeah. yeah. I'm I'm for it all. I want to feed them. I want to give them health care. I want to do all of that. But the point is, I guess what all I'm trying to say is you're not going to, what's the old saying? You're going to catch more flies with honey than vinegar. Absolutely. Which who except for a frog would be trying to catch flies anyway. Yeah, that but, makes sense. <laughs> but the, makes sense. <laughs> the metaphor still stands. Yeah. You're not going to win somebody over to your way of thinking if you're just, you know, treating them like garbage. Right. And you're dehumanizing them and right. not treating them like fellow human beings. Yes. You've got to understand that. 
you know, that's your wayward brother, yeah. you know, and, and we, we have completely lost that in American Absolutely. political discourse yeah. today. Oh, we yeah. demonize and we dehumanize whoever disagrees with us. Yeah. And it's, it, I feel like it needs to stop. Yeah. You no, know, because I agree a hundred percent. And it, honestly, if you sit down with someone who's liberal, conservative, whatever, a lot of times you'll find out that maybe you're off slightly but yeah. you would probably agree on more than you disagree right. about. You know? Yes. No, and, and, and I 100% agree with that. And I can say it's a touchy subject, and mm-hmm. I'm, a, I, I'm, I'm not a top person. I don't want to tell anybody what to do with their body or, yeah. you know, any of that stuff that gets thrown around and mm-hmm. all that, you know. I just think that, hey, I'm happy that I want people to be alive, you mm-hmm. know, and I don't want them to die on death row. I, you know, I don't want to put them in the electric chair. I don't, I, I just want people to live, you know? So yeah, that's just where I'm at. And I haven't thought much deeper than that. And I think life is important. And I think that God brings us all into the world with a certain purpose uh, to, you know, do here on earth. And, you know, so let's let everybody have that chance. But I also know on the flip side of that, some people are in very horrible circumstances that's have true. been put through very difficult uh, situations and they're probably not making this choice willy nilly right. either so um you know i would never ever you know try to uh you know make them feel bad about the the choices they feel they have to make mm-hmm. um i would just say that but we would like them to there, think maybe think right. about it yeah there may be more. other yeah. alternatives out there that we could explore and part of that might be uh, hey our political system doing a lot more to streamline adoption mm-hmm. To streamline the fostering process, to to help them get aid and health care and everything else they need that's lacking, that's bringing a burden onto their life, and that's all I'm saying about all of it. You know, I, mm-hmm. I'm I'm not going to be holding a sign up and <laughs> taking pictures of my buddy's <laughs> HVAC work van <laughs> and putting it on social media and getting everybody all mad at him when he just showed up, <laughs> like smoking cigarettes around back, working on the air conditioner. <laughs> yeah. You know, like. That's wild. I don't know. Anyway. You know what? Since we've gone this far, yeah. let me just go a little bit further out. <laughs> I'll just take it on. <laughs> I mean, Let's see if we get some people mad at us. <laughs> this personally is why I am such a big believer in the artificial womb that science is working on uh-huh. right now. Because yeah. I feel like, you know, Congress is not going to take this up. They're, no. You know, the Supreme Court has ruled, and that's the way they've ruled. That's right. the way it's going to stand. Yeah, I agree. My, I guess my dream scenario is that one day a woman can give away her child at maybe as early as three months. Mm-hmm. Maybe that could make everybody happy. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Woman doesn't have to keep her child, but she doesn't have to kill the child either. Yeah. I mean, no, I, I think I know science is working on that, yeah, and that's what I am. I am all for. It. Yeah, I feel like uh, you know, sooner than later, we probably will be there. Yeah, the uh, advances we're making in medicine. I mean, just with with all kind of crazy stuff. I mean, you know, Hudson's got heart problems. He has a pacemaker now. They have pacemakers you can pretty much control from a phone. You know, <laughs> like it, it's wild. Yeah, know? yeah. Um, his isn't that way now, but, uh, so anybody but, wants to donate money to my ministry slash human farm <laughs> that I'm trying to set up, <laughs> just send it in. Yeah. But yeah, the things, the things that came along, I'd say Hudson's 10 years old from when he was about born and had this condition and he had all the surgeries and stuff to now uh-huh. the advancements have been crazy. They're, they're beginning to replace valves in the heart through the cath lab. So it's not like an open heart surgery anymore. And that'll be online, you know, which is good news for us. He's got a leaky valve. He'll eventually have to have replaced. And, you know, so it's exciting to think about that and, mm-hmm. and what medicine can do to help society all together. And, uh, you know, so anyways, we kind of took a turn there. That was kind of heavy. Yeah. You want to? That, that did get a little heavy. <laughs> you want to lighten the mood a little bit? Yeah. Let's. Okay. So, <laughs> all right. This next story I have, which isn't the most adult story I have today, but it isn't a sort of an adult we're, story. We're heading that direction. Yeah. Right. So if you want to, uh, maybe tell your kids to just you know go play outside or something <laughs> yeah. like that. Uh, that's fine. They need to be playing outside anyway. Yeah. They've been looking at a screen way too long. Oh, that's right. It's a beautiful outside. Yeah. It is. Go outside, kids. It is. I mean, right now it's not beautiful outside, but where, maybe when you listen when to they're this listening Tuesday, to this, it is right. And you know, really, you can appreciate a and if it's a raining cold, outside, dreary day. Hey, let them play in the rain. Rain's never killed anybody. That's right, except in Genesis chapter six. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Very good point. That's a solid point <laughs> so right there. Go outside. Yeah, yeah. So go outside. We're not having one of those rains. I guarantee you. Okay. God said He wouldn't do yeah, it. Anymore. Wasn't going to do it anymore. <laughs> 
All right, so this comes from the New York Post. Um, we've all, you and I have been married. Uh, getting your picture made when you're married, the photographer and all that is very, very important. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know why yet, either. but I do know it is. I, I'll ask this question. Have you, like, outside of, like, you know, the first few months after getting married, do y'all, like, get out your wedding photos and just look at them? No. Random? Me either. You know? Yeah. Like, why did we pay all this money? <laughs> For for eight hundred photos. Well, I don't know about you, but in my house, the pictures have not stopped. When we had kids, oh, it well, started yeah. it all over again. But I've somehow we've a li- we had a family photo made, like professional family photo yeah. made when Libby was a baby, and we haven't had one made since. You know, so. no, we get three to four sessions a year. Oh wow, yes, that's torture right there. Well, like, I mean, we should okay. bring that before the UN. <laughs> You know, that's cruel and inhumane. Oh, I mean, okay, the babe, you know, Eli, he needed his six months and yeah. he needed his 18 months and all these other months. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. You for some reason, it's, it's these yeah. milestone months, right. whatever. Yeah. Like the the 18 month <laughs> challenge he's completed it. So now we got to get the <laughs> photographer down here. Yeah. Well, but we've also got Christmas and stuff. So yeah. I'm, we're still, we're still doing pictures. We have no pictures of Thomas when he was a baby. Um, they were. <laughs> Are you serious? They were all. Well, I mean, we had like a few professional ones, but uh, they were all stored on a computer, and Thomas spilt milk on it. And, so it's his fault. Yeah, they're gone. <laughs> they're gone. They're just not there anymore. And uh, do you still have the computer? No, no. Okay, I think I shot it. <laughs> I didn't want anybody going and searching the hard drive too too much, you know. I got like either blew it up or set it on fire or something. We did our best to recover it, but yeah, that's just the way it happened. Yeah, and it's okay, you know. I don't look at my baby pictures at all either. I don't think my mom gets them out and looks at them. So, yeah, it's not going to be the end of the world. But anyways, back to wedding photographers. <laughs> yes, very important to select a good wedding photographer, especially these days and age where your wedding photos are going to be online mm-hmm. on Facebook and stuff, and For everybody com- total strangers to yeah critique look or critique. Yeah. I I am part of a Facebook group where they wedding shame. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, there was a picture in there today of a girl who got married, and all the groomsmen had on blue jeans and rebel flag vest. <laughs> Nothing under them, just rebel flag vest, bare arms, and everything. Thing, so. Okay, you need to send me an invite. To okay, this group. I will. I will. I will. Yeah, I'm in some very interesting Facebook <laughs> groups, by the way, with a lot of fun goes on in there. Oh man. Um, okay, so a wedding photographer is arrested for having sex with guests and urinating on a tree. Wow. T- <laughs> this Texas wedding was far from picture perfect. A wedding photographer who moonlights as a swimsuit model—that's a red flag right there. Just to say that. <laughs> was arrested Saturday after having sex with a male guest and then urinating on a nearby tree, police said. Well, you know what? Okay, <laughs> this is terrible, but I'm just going to tell you right now. If, if Tara had came in and said, the photographer I'm hiring you know, is a <laughs> swimsuit model on the side, I probably would not have protested the way <laughs> yeah. I should have. Oh, yeah, you're like, okay, yeah, I think that'll be okay, you know. You're like, yeah. and now you're suddenly very involved in the <laughs> wedding process. Like, no, I'd like to meet with her beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine Lee Meta, uh, who's 26, uh, was arrested at the Springs event venue in Weatherford, Texas, which is about 30 miles west of Fort Worth. After an off-duty sheriff's deputy working as a security guard was alerted to Meta having sex with a guest in a room at the Parker County event space. Sheriff's officials said Meta, who also works as a model under the name Max McIntyre, just in case (laughs) anyone's interested. (laughs) In case anyone wants to Google that. Was confronted about the tryst and officers told her to leave, but she strolled up to a nearby fountain and began to yell. Uh, Meta continued walking to a tree on the property and urinated. Cops Whoa. arrested the sultry shutterbug, <laughs> who threatened relatives of the officers as they led her to the back of a police cruiser. Y'all's families will be dead by Christmas. Y'all's daughters are dead, she told dad deputies. Gum. My dad is going to find out about this, and y'all are explicative dead. D E A. D. Well, she knows how to spell dead. So yeah, that's good. Exactly. <laughs> um, she's facing charges of public intoxication and obstruction slash retaliation, and she was released from custody the Sunday after the event. Investigators said a prescription bottle 
of alprazolam, which is Xanax, commonly used to treat anxiety and panic disorders, was found in Meta's jacket. Hmm. The prescription was in her name, and deputies believe she mixed the drug with alcohol. Now, oh, I've heard this I'm before. S- sorry, mom. Now, let me just say that can result in some bad, bad choices being made. I not, you know, not. It did here. Yeah, <laughs> in right. Fact. It says it leads to dangerous side effects, including extreme drowsiness, nausea, and confusion. Now, I don't think she was drowsy at all. (laughs) Um, She couldn't be reached for comment, and a woman who answered a cell phone listed in her name said she was unavailable. Uh, However, a woman who identified herself as Meta's sister told WFAA that Meta claimed she unknowingly drank spiked drinks during the ceremony. Okay, all right, that's a good excuse. (laughs) Yeah. You know? Um, she said she went outside and she said these two men tried to approach her and do inappropriate things. And she said she was yelling and trying to get help and things got turned around in a negative way. Um, in a statement. So is she saying this guy that she was with, maybe she didn't want to be with yeah, this like guy? he spiked her drink or something. Huh. Yeah. If that's if that's true, they put the they locked up the wrong one in my yeah, opinion. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now, I don't know if she's just using this as a convenient excuse, but... You know, play it safe. We're supposed to believe both. believe all women. I was about to say, yeah, let's play it safe. Take them both to yeah, jail. Right? Yeah, let's get a blood test done. <laughs> yeah. You know? um, police officers handled the matter discreetly. No guests were involved or disturbed from celebrating the couple in any way. The event venue stated. So I was about to say that's a story to tell. Yeah. For the rest of your life at your wedding, you know, <laughs> like when somebody's like, "Oh, my wedding day was horrible. My mother-in-law was, you know, doing all this." I feel crazy like that's stuff. one of those stories you want to tell about some, like a friend's wedding that you went to, not about your own. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yes. yes. All right. Oh man. So you got one more. I have one more. All right, and then I um, got one more, and we're right on schedule. Okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. For longtime listening Earth Oddity fans out there, if you can think back to. I think our maybe second or third episode, we talked about Amanda Sparrow Large, mm-hmm. who I want to say was maybe Amanda Teagues at the time. I'm yeah. not 100% yeah, sure. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, she got married to a 300-year-old pirate oh, okay. out in international That's waters. Right. You remember That's that? Right. Yep. We even went so far as to, to snip out the audio and put some pictures to it and make a cute little Facebook right. video, this shared it all over the on place. It. This is yeah. early this on. This is early Earth Oddity. Well, it's a very sad day indeed, John, because oh, yeah. that marriage has ended in divorce. Oh, no. I know. They were so oh, good together. No. It's, <laughs> it's tough to make a marriage work. It is. Yeah. Especially a long distance marriage. Yeah, yeah. Across dimensions <laughs> yes. and centuries. Yeah. It's tough. <laughs> Woman who was married to the ghost of a 300 year old pirate issues a warning after their split. Okay. This is a very short article, but we're going to go through it quickly. A woman who married the ghost of a pirate has revealed that she has split from her 300-year-old husband and has issued a warning. Irish Jack Sparrow impersonator Amanda Sparrow Large, 46, made headlines when she legally married to the Haitian pirate by a shaman priest. Oh, yeah. Amanda, Gotta get a shaman. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Amanda said earlier this year that she found her soulmate in the pirate form of the 1700s who was executed for thieving on the high seas. They tied the knot in a boat off the Irish coast in international wa- waters, the Irish Mirror reports. But now the mum from Drohega, Cowlorth, Ireland, wherever that is, has revealed the unlikely union is over and warned people to be very careful when dabbling in spirituality. <laughs> you know, it seems, I think I remember the Bible saying yeah. not to talk to right. dead people. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> That's um, not good. Posting on social media, she said, So I feel it's time to let everyone know that my marriage is over. I will explain all in due course, but for now, I want to say be very careful when dabbling in spirituality. It's not something to mess with. Pirates of the Caribbean superfan Amanda shelled out 6,000 pounds, changing her name and look, and worked for a time as a Jack Sparrow impersonator. Uh, she had her name changed by Deed Pole from Amanda Large and had replica tattoos, dreadlocks, and gold teeth fitted to look like the character played by Johnny Depp. Uh. She now lives in Belfast and announced in October that she was asexual, oh. adding that she always knew from a young age I was different. I wonder why she didn't know that yeah. <laughs> you know, earlier <laughs> when she went through right. the marriage. So asexual is like, I don't, I'm, not, I don't, I'm not attracted to anybody, yes. right? Okay, okay. 
My wife's that way, apparently. <laughs> it's like, <la0000> I've heard it referred to as no mo sexual. Because <laughs> you're having sex no mo. There you go. Yeah. Uh, she grew up in a small village in Ireland where sex- sexuality was taboo. Anything that was not hetero was never discussed. Okay. I wonder what relations with ghosts would count as. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. She made headlines around the world after meeting her ghost Jack in 2014, and she said that he used to appear beside her when they laid in bed together. Okay. She said he was dark-skinned and he had jet black hair. Uh, She told him that she wasn't cool with casual relations, that she had to get married. She's a proper young lady. And she did, and that's the end of the article. But apparently they're not together anymore, and it's just so sad because they were so good together. Yeah. I wonder if there's like a ghost divorce attorney you have to go through for all that <laughs> i don't know right, or just end it like hey buddy sorry well i mean they, i mean this was supposedly legal yeah, right right this was a legal marriage yeah. in international waters so right. is there not like a paper trail somewhere it I had mean, to be i feel like you gotta go to uh a... he's gonna be on the hook for some alimony once they split up <laughs> you know he's got Ghost a alimony. yeah he's got like a buried treasure somewhere <laughs> that she's entitled a part of so yeah yeah they need to get that worked out man uh, well, she, you know, she said that she was going to tell us what happened in due course. You know, I don't know about you, but I am glued. Yeah, to right. Find out I what would happens. love to know. Yeah, I'll set up a Google alert for that. <laughs> I know. Did they not try like couples counseling? I or? sort of think so. You would have to, you know, right? All couples. You just can't let your marriage go. You know, I, I mean, know. you got to work for it. Every single couple I know out there, I don't think there's a couple that's ever just had a perfect marriage yeah. and never had any sort of issues whatsoever. Right. Is there? I mean, well, I mean, Deidre and I don't have that many issues. I mean, but what about when y'all were first together? I mean, did y'all never really, fuss or fight? Not really. I mean, we've literally known each other from preschool. Okay. And we dated for eight years before we got married. Man. We've never had knockdown, drag out fights. Or well, anything. now me and Tara haven't yeah. either. We, we, we always kind of discuss things. Mm-hmm. No, she, I, I more often, like I said, you know, we're always working on me in my marriage. <laughs> like I'm the one that's always doing something wrong for some yes. reason. Never address any other issues that may come up on the other side. Yeah, but we're both really laid back and okay. kind of like you know non selfish. I don't say we have a perfect marriage because it's been tough. We struggled with money and all. I mean, I lost all our money and everything. <laughs> But even during then, I mean, it was never like an argument or anything. She was just kind of like, hey, I'm with you. We're riding to get ride or die, you know? Yeah. Like, I wanted to get her an airbrushed jean jacket that said ride or die. <laughs> she said it's know? too late now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm into right. the- Yeah, she just... <laughs> I'm in it this far. There's no going right. back. Yeah. So, but, but, but I will say we had a lot of advantages going into our marriage, uh, now, number one, we're probably the only Southern Baptist couple that ever got married without pre-marriage counseling. So, just like seriously, the, yeah, absolutely. I thought that was a rule. Nope, nope. that kind of ticks me off a little yeah, bit. Yeah, got out of that somehow. <laughs> uh, but both of our parents have very good marriages that we grew up seeing. You know, like my parents are. are lo- I've only saw my parents argue once in forty-two years. Only once in forty-two years. Now. I'm sure they may have had some disagreements along the way, but nothing ever escalated except that one time. Same with her parents. We just didn't really, we're, none of that was modeled for us. Uh-huh. And we both just have compatible personalities uh, as far as being able to get along as a team. So, Well, I would like to tell everyone out there in our audience that John is a weirdo. I am. Most marriages are not I like know. this. I agree. And don't feel like you're the only one no. if you're having some marital issues, if y'all are you know, yeah, occasionally don't. fighting. As long as things aren't getting physical. Now, if yeah. things are getting physical, yeah, no, don't I think around. we need to get law enforcement right, involved because yeah. that is a serious problem. Yes, you don't need anybody beating on you. But if y'all are just not happy together... Uh, don't throw in the towel right. because a marriage is like a garden. You're going to get what you, what you put into it. Okay. You're going to yeah. you're going to work hard. Worms. <laughs> and it, and now let me say this: it's worth it. Yeah. If you're willing it's to totally put in the, if you if you're willing to put in the work, it's yeah. worth it because right. you will reap more than you sow. Yeah. If that makes sense. And I would say but, that it's not that like we haven't had to work on our relationship over the years. Yeah. Um, just a lot of the normal things that people would consider problems, uh, we have never considered problems. Mm-hmm. And part of that's because we head it off before it becomes a problem. Right. You know, like if she starts getting on my nerves, you know, I'll say something to her before it escalates, you know, into mm-hmm. like a, 
month long thing and it and I blow my top one day and I punch through a wall or something, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, like I say, we have a lot of advantages that other people didn't have going mm-hmm. into our marriage and it's made it very good. And, and a lot of that is knowing each other literally our whole life. So we both knew exactly the mm-hmm. other person we were getting. And she probably regrets that a little bit now, <laughs> but you know, well, whatever. Well, good for you, chump. Yeah. Yeah, I've got the way better. I mean, I, I, I'm I'm a very very blessed man, you mm-hmm. know. Like I no bones about it. I've had a very easy life compared to a lot of people, and I got very very lucky. Not lucky, but uh, blessed. Yeah, I was very fortunate to find Dieter when I did, and keep her around as long as I have. So you know, you know, my father in law is a, a preacher. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, most everyone who knows me knows that already. That's but there right. may be people listening to this who don't know that, right? Uh, we go to church, and my father-in-law is actually the pastor. Mm-hmm. Now, he didn't do our premarital counseling. He, oh, yeah, he had conflict the, of interest he, there. He had the wisdom to yeah. to go with an outside uh, minister to do our premarital yeah. counseling. But I tell you this, I did get to sit down with my father-in-law and have a sex talk. Oh. And it was... That is... Whoa. <laughs> it was not fun. No. It was every bit as awkward as you may be thinking about oh, right wow. now. Yeah. And he explained to me that, you know, uh, <laughs> that is not as often as I, as I hope or, <laughs> or wish. It's, it's, not, it's not what I thought it was going to be. Okay. Um, wow. 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 I'm stunned. I'm <laughs> he, stunned. He brought up the term variations. Okay. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to make this difficult on you too. So I asked him what he meant by <laughs> what that. What do you mean by that? Can you elaborate on that? Because <laughs> I was just like, you know what? This is this is not going to – I'm going to make this yeah. – I'm going to make this awkward for you too, yeah. pal. That's tough. That's tough. <laughs> Mm, yeah, I don't. Ooh, I, I don't know if I could have gotten through that. All right, <laughs> let's move along. So we're, we've now gotten behind the schedule. <laughs> yes. Um, so this comes from somewhere in Britain. I don't even know what publication it is. Um, police make groveling apology after describing fat, naked flasher's small penis. <laughs> Police officers. <laughs> Kids, stay outside. <laughs> Don't police, come in yet. Police officers have apologized after issuing a description of a flasher which described his small penis and low hanging testicles. <laughs> <laughs> North Yorkshire police said their appeal went into too much detail in an attempt to catch the pervert. <laughs> <laughs> Officials continue to investigate the disturbing incident which happened on Sunday uh, when a student was confronted by a man on the streets of York. A spokesman said on the evening of uh, 19th of November of 2018, we posted an appeal on Facebook to help identify a suspect in the York area who performed a sexual act in public. The appeal included a description of a naked man, which we accept went into too much detail. Uh Uh-oh. the appeal was quickly removed. And, <laughs> They're going to make him regret. <laughs> yeah. The appeal was quickly removed and more appropriately worded version posted on the force website. We use social media every day to appeal for information and to warn and inform members of the public. As always, we thank all of our followers for their support and sharing our appeals. It is very much appreciated. The suspect, I think he's still at large. <laughs> probably not the right right he's, choice of terms. He's still at small. <laughs> the suspect is described as a white male with very pale complexion, aged between 35 and 45 years, and around 5 foot 10 uh, inches tall with a fat build. And I would just like to bring up that I have not been to England. Okay. Um, he has very little body hair and no obvious tattoos or scars. <laughs> Anyone with information. That counts me out. Yeah. <laughs> that could assist the investigation is urged to call North Yorkshire police. Uh, so what are we now worried about the feelings of the flasher? Yeah, that's like, are <laughs> we know? shaming yeah. the flash? Are we flasher shaming here? Come on. I don't now. know. I think if, if you want me to know, I think this is like racially motivated because <laughs> uh, when you say small penis, low hanging testicles, you're automatically thinking a white guy. All right. <laughs> this is, that's just pretty much standard. Okay. <laughs> So maybe that's what it was about. I don't know. <laughs> but if you're the flasher and that's what you get described as, you got to be like, ooh, that stings a little bit. You, you know, know what? I f- hey, I feel like you play stupid games, you win stupid Absolutely, prizes. Yeah. I think you brought this on yeah. yourself, dude. Right. I don't get you the know. flashing thing either. You I don't know? either. I don't. I mean, like, I don't get to see how you can get your jollies from that. I don't you know? either. Like, 
that just seems really really strange to me. You know? Yeah, like I just need to. I here look at what I got. You know, I get, like, <laughs> I get more out of looking at other people. Yeah, right. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no. I mean, if a <laughs> wedding photographer ever wanted to flash me, yeah, you know, I might be okay, but <laughs> but not this dude. So yeah, who's exactly fits my description, by the way. <laughs> five ten, a little chubby between thirty five and forty five, pale skin. Yeah, yeah, that's me. But that wasn't me. Let's like throw that out there. They're missing one key detail. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, one key. I wasn't in England. All right. Yeah. Okay. Haven't oh, been to York man. in a while. Hit that ad quickly, John. Okay, so we're going to talk about our friends over at Cajun Curl, world-famous Cajun Curl Bayou Blended Spice. Uh, check them out at their website. It's uh, CajunCurl.com. You can order the spice there and also their potato cutter for making your own home-brewed chips. Yes. Um, it was created on the Elm Bayou. In the Evang- Jolly Elm oh, Bayou. Oh, yeah, the Jolly Old Elm Bayou in Evangeline Parish down in Louisiana. And it's a seasoning that goes on everything. If you like cooking or eating, this is a spice for you. Cajun Curl Bayou Blended Spice goes well with chicken, beef, pork, potatoes, and anything else you can think of putting it on. Um, their spiral potato cutter is absolutely amazing. It's easy to use and it's easy to clean. And it'll allow you to make your own chips using the Cajun Curl Spice. If you want to make Santa happy, Christmas uh, Eve, put you out some homemade potato chips with Cajun curl on them, and uh, he'll probably come back on Easter. I don't know. I mean, he'll be back more (laughs) often. I'll just say that much. Um, On the website, uh, CajunCurl.com, you can order not only order their original Bayou Blended Spice and the chip cutter, too, um, but you'll find recipes that are absolutely mind-blowing. You can locate, locate your nearest retailer or order your own. If your local grocer doesn't carry world famous Cajun Curl Bayou Blended Spice, ask them to start stocking. Um, here locally in Tuscaloosa County, it's available at uh, South's Finest Meats, Vowels on Skyland, and Piggly Wiggly in Lurling Wallace at Northport. Um, all of their products are made in the USA, so not only do you enjoy the taste of Cajun Curl, but you also feel patriotic while you eat your meal. It's all natural, low salt, has a little kick to it, but it doesn't burn your lips. World famous Cajun Curl Bayou Blended Spice. Taste the spice, but not the heat. Check them out at CajunCurl.com and use the promo code EOP10 to get a 10% discount. Yes, because we ask that you use the spice, but we don't ask you pay full price. That's right. EOP10. That's right. Absolutely. All right. For community news, we are in a hurry. We may have some reviews. We didn't we, look. Yeah, we didn't look. We got to go. That's right. But we will say this. Uh, this week, we had the privilege of yeah. podcasting with another duo out there on the West Coast, uh-huh. uh, Mr. Francisco Ruiz mm-hmm. and Mr. Paul Powers. And uh, they do a podcast called the Retro Rewind Podcast, where they review movies from 15 plus years ago. Yeah. A great nostalgic podcast to listen to Absolutely. if you like that warm, nostalgic feeling. Yeah. And uh, they're into all kind of stuff. They review old video games. They got like they Twitch do. streams and yes. like YouTube channel and all they, kind of cool stuff. They, they know what they're doing. Yeah, they're way more professional than go. us. Yes. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like our theme song for that should have been like "I'm a little bit country, <laughs> I'm a little bit rock and roll," you know, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, that would have been yeah. fun. But yeah. they uh, they taught us how to do Google Hangout. That's right. Never yeah. done it before. Never. They done showed it before. us how to do it. Right. Yeah, never and had now we have the power. It. Yeah, we can hang out anytime on Google. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. That's absolutely right. So. And uh, then we also had them to do a special bonus right. episode of yeah. Earth Oddity. With retro stories. Yeah, with retro yeah. stories from 15 plus years ago. Yeah. Sometimes oh, yeah. way plus. Oh, I went way back. <laughs> yeah, I went way, way back. On back. Yeah, yeah. And that will be coming out probably later this week. Yeah. If not this week, certainly next week. But yeah. it will be coming out soon. Yeah, so keep your ears peeled. Yes. And with that said... You have been listening to the Earth Oddity Podcast. And we thank you so much for listening to us no matter where you get us. Whether it's Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Acast, Overcast, Spotify, TuneIn, iHeartRadio. Yeah. We're not on uh, Pandora yet, but we'll get yeah. there. Yeah, we're almost. Yes. Yeah. If you would like to email the show, you can email us. We are earthoddity at planetmail.net. If you would like to follow us on Instagram, where we sometimes put pictures up. Did this week. <laughs> we did this week. It's right. underscore earthoddity. 
If you would like to tweet at us, hey, we could tweet. You never know. That's we right. are at underscore Earth Oddity. Yeah. And we have a phone number, too. If you would like to call us and leave us a voice message, what's that number, John? It is 662-493-2059. What's that number again? 662-493-2059. Call now. Yeah, call now. Operator standing by. And we hope everybody up there has a good week. Earth Oddity for the Friends Radio Network signing off. Love y'all. Later, y'all. This has been a very odd production. Thanks for listening.